had some thoughts about <clears throat> the Passover. Just before I, I say much about this, I also want to just acknowledge here that this, the Lord's table is not the Passover, and it's not a replacement or a substitute for the Passover. But in the Passover, God did show us what he was going to do with Christ and taking away sins. <clears throat> when God gave Moses the instructions for the Passover here in Exodus 12, he said, And thus shall ye eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. In particular, I want to focus on the blood, of course. <clears throat> the word Passover is an intriguing word, especially when we consider the, it, the Lord said it is the Lord's Passover. In other places, the Jesus is our Passover. <clears throat> there is provision in it for the people, but it is something that God is going to do. It is his Passover. Now, at this point, when God gave these instructions to Moses, there had already come nine very grievous plagues upon the land of Egypt. <clears throat> he visited, you could say that he visited Egypt from a distance in these plagues. He sent locusts and flies and disease and darkness and all these things. But on this particular night, it's as if the Lord was going to come closer for a personal visit. He's going to pass over the entire land of Egypt. <clears throat> now God was very merciful in that the angel of the Lord didn't stay long and he didn't travel over the whole earth. He just passed through the land of Egypt. He passed just over the place where the people of God were being afflicted. Now the Lord has determined that there will be a greater day when he will pass over the whole world, which is the place where his people are being afflicted. This is the place where the prince of this world refuses to let his captives go, and the world in Babylon will not repent of the plagues that the Lord is going to send upon them. And there will come a day when the plagues will stop, and the Lord himself will descend with a shout, and he will come to judge the world in righteousness and the people with his truth. Now there were the previous nine plagues upon Egypt, <clears throat> They were for Egypt. They were for the nation that had made slaves of the people of God. However, this last plague, the Passover, the death of the firstborn, was going to be extended even to Goshen. This is over the whole land of Egypt. There were some of the other plagues where the, the Hebrews were exempt from these because it didn't come on the land of Goshen. But this was over the whole land. He says, for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. In this first Passover, the Lord is showing that the most prominent thing is the blood. He passed over the whole land of Egypt. Where you lived in this land couldn't hide you from this Passover. It couldn't save you from this plague. He passed over Egyptian houses, and he passed over Hebrew houses. So your nationality could not save you. Male or female didn't matter. Old or young didn't matter. Not even man or beast mattered. <clears throat> when the Lord surveyed the land that night, there was only one thing he looked for, and that was the blood on the doorpost. That was the only thing that made the difference between life and death, between salvation or cursing, between grief or joy. The angel of the Lord didn't stop at each house and open the door and look and see who was inside. <clears throat> he wasn't looking for Egyptian houses or for Hebrew houses. He passed over all the houses of that land, and all he was looking for was the blood. And if he didn't find the blood on the doorpost, then it didn't matter who was in the house. The firstborn was going to die, <clears throat> whether Egyptian or Hebrew or man or beast. <clears throat> 
And when the Lord delivered you from sin, you really, you really have to see this. You are not the primary consideration. His attention was not riveted just on you, <clears throat> but what Jesus did for you. His sacrifice certainly benefited you, <clears throat> but he was the one that did all the work. No man but Jesus was involved in the transaction that took place on the cross. It was the ultimate payment made to God for sins. <clears throat> and this is the payment that God looked for, the blood of a precious lamb without blemish. The Lord didn't say, when I see you, I'll pass over the house. He said, when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. That means that putting the blood on the doorpost was done in faith. <clears throat> no one was to go outside the house and, and speak to the angel of death. That's not how this was handled. They were to stay in the house. They were to put the blood on the doorpost. <clears throat> and the angel didn't look to see who was in the house or what they were doing. The blood in the doorpost or the absence of it told the story. God was saying to the people that night, show me the proof that for your meal tonight you are eating of a lamb of the first year without blemish, as I commanded. Display to me the proof that you have heard and believed the word that I have given to you, Moses, that I am going to deliver you this night and destroy your enemies. Show me the proof that you have availed yourselves of the provision that I have given for saving your life, the life of a lamb for the lives of your firstborn. Apply the blood of the lamb, and when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. The Lord was showing in the Passover how he was going to save his people through Jesus Christ. One of the great wonders of salvation is that the blood of Jesus accomplishes what no man could possibly do. His blood is the payment for sin. Jesus said it is shed for the remission of sins. His blood appeased the wrath of God by making payment for our sins, thereby purchasing his fallen creatures back to him. Jesus' blood made God happy and satisfied. And Jesus' blood provides many benefits for us also. For one, his blood is the blood of the New Testament. That is that God is able to keep his covenant, which is based upon the forgiveness of sins because of Jesus' blood. He promised to put his law in our inward parts. He promised that we wouldn't have to teach each other saying, Know the Lord, for we will all know the Lord from the least to the greatest. He promised to be our God and that we would be his people. And all of this is dependent upon our sin being taken away first. God can't keep this covenant with sinners. Jesus said, This blood is shed for you. <clears throat> and what else does it do for you? We are justified by his blood. Not only is our guilt and our sin taken away, but we know that it has been taken away. And this gives us confidence before God. We have a redemption through his blood. That is, we have been rescued and we now belong to God. We are made nigh to God through his blood. Peace has been made between God and us through his blood. If you believe in Jesus Christ, God is not angry with you anymore. Our consciences have been purged from dead works through his blood. We have boldness to enter the holiest, that is the very place where God dwells, by the blood of Jesus. We are living in perilous times, but do you know how we will overcome the devil who has come down to the earth having great wrath? It is by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. All of this is involved in the saying, when I see the blood... I will pass over you. That doesn't mean we won't have any trouble in this life. It means that the trouble won't hurt you. <clears throat> and it is not because of who you are or what you have done or what you haven't done or what you can do or how hard you try to obey. God is looking for the application of the blood of his son in you. <clears throat> now on a practical level, what that means is he's looking for people who believe in his son who honor him and who realize how precious and effective the blood of Jesus is. The blood of Jesus is not like a piece of jewelry or an article of clothing that we put on and then take off when we go get back home. His blood works in us, and God is looking for the effects of that blood in you. 
For such ones as who eat his flesh and drink his blood, who find Jesus' body and blood to be meat and drink indeed, God has provided a refuge in him. He sees no iniquity in such ones. Our names are already noted in heaven. That first Passover was also a prefigure of another day when the Lord is going to come again to pass over not just Egypt, but the whole world. And in the great day of his wrath, when the heavens are on fire and the earth melts with the fervent heat, when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power, when he comes to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him, then the saints will be ever so glad for the blood of Jesus. The Lord has already revealed there will be one way to survive that great day of his wrath. When I see the blood, I'll pass over you. Let's give thanks for such a great provision in Jesus Christ. Amen.